A standard 80-gallon or 320-liter bathtub can easily go down the plug hole in just a few minutes. But what if we increase the volume of water to 1,340.74 million cubic kilometers? Of course, it would be pretty difficult to find such a spacious bath. But we can do without it, because there's just such a volume in the world's ocean. How long would it take for the world ocean to disappear? And then what would happen to our home planet when all the water disappears down to the very last drop? Fortunately, scientists are already interested in this topic. And according to the results of their research, there are two pieces of news, good and bad. First, the good. It's possible to drain the oceans. But the bad news? It would take way too long. It would take a staggering amount of years to happen. Craig McLean, executive director of the University of Louisiana Marine Consortium, has calculated that if the world ocean flows into a hole the size of a bath in your bathroom, the planet would lose 43,200 liters or 1,141 gallons of water every day. At such a speed, it would take more than 80 trillion years to drain completely. And this is 6,000 times longer even than our entire universe has already existed. But let's confess, McLean shows plums with too small a diameter. The oceans deserve a bigger hole. For example, Challenger Void in the Mariana Trench. It's this place for the operation of draining the planet which sparks the imagination of writer and illustrator Randall Monroe. He believes that for the purity of the experiment, we need a special portal through which we would send the oceans not just to anywhere, but to Mars. After all, if we place water near the Earth, it would immediately fall upon us as heavy rain and so strong that they would form the ocean again. So it's somehow safer with the portal idea. According to the idea, the water goes on an interplanetary journey. At first, its level on Earth would decrease by less than one centimeter, or 0.4 inches per day. Have you ever imagined this incredible sight? You haven't? Well, that's not surprising. After all, a centimeter a day is very little and quite boring. No cool whirlpools, no catastrophes, no climate change. Monroe was disappointed about the same as you are now, so he offered to open some more imaginary drains and wait until the level of the oceans falls by 50 meters, or 164 feet. At this very moment, changes on the planet would become quite noticeable. The Netherlands, known for their water channels, would now be lying in dryness and comfort. And Sri Lanka, New Guinea, Great Britain, the islands of Java and Borneo would receive land bridges to their neighboring states. After another 50 meters or 164 feet, a drop in the water level near Scotland in the United Kingdom would open up a new huge island. They would be formed by the Grand Banks off of Newfoundland. And the more the ocean would drain, the more new land we would see. Over time, the Netherlands would connect with North America, and Japan would bind Russia and the Korean Peninsula. By the time the waterfall mark reaches minus 5 kilometers, or 3 miles, the Arctic Ocean would cease to merge altogether. It would be cut off from the land portals. Its tributaries would stop a little later. As a result, complete drainage through the Mariana Trench could not work. There would still be a lot of water left on Earth. A data visualization researcher at the Department of Geodesy and Mathematics at the University of New Brunswick, one Ryan Brido, visualized this cosmic plug-pulling bath time extravaganza. He based his calculations on Monroe and showed what the Earth would look like during and after the draining. According to his assumptions, the whole process would take 3 million years. It looks impressive, of course, but let's be honest. The scenario of discharging the oceans through the Mariana Trench is not the most plausible. There are much more realistic reasons why the Earth could remain without water. For example, 
global climate change or an arid sun. After all, once the star has already destroyed life on one planet, Venus, why shouldn't it repeat its trick again? It's estimated that every billion years, the sun increases its brightness by 7%. It's this tendency to warm more and more that Colin Goldblatt of the University of Victoria blames for all the water that once disappeared on Venus and life along with it. In his opinion, the Earth is next in line. Over time, the sun will heat the global ocean to 56 degrees Celsius or 133 degrees Fahrenheit. That is, it would boil and gradually disappear into space as steam. Even the clouds wouldn't help. Today, they, like umbrellas, protect us from solar radiation and cool down the hot temperatures. But as a result of ocean boiling, the greenhouse effect would increase and with it, the protective effect of our clouds would weaken. To save the Earth from drying out would be impossible. But humanity has been able to speed up this process. Climatologist James Hansen believes, as we burn off and use the reserves of oil, gas, and coal, the arid sauna on our planet is formed faster. Indeed, during the combustion of fuel, additional carbon dioxide is emitted into the atmosphere, and it, in turn, enhances the greenhouse effect. But even if you very carefully saved fuel and didn't burn anything at all, it would still not be possible to avoid dehydrating the planet. Researchers from the Laboratory of Dynamic Meteorology have calculated that due to the increase in the temperature of the sun, water will disappear from our planet in about one billion years. But if the oceans are boiled away, then what would remain for people? First of all, ice caps, lakes, rivers, and groundwater. Altogether, they make up 3.5% of our modern water supply. It's not enough for humanity to maintain water balance. Moreover, the stock would not be replenished. Without clouds, which usually form over the oceans, it would rarely rain, which means that no new water could be expected to fall. Plants would dry out, and animals in search of reservoirs are unlikely to survive. And how would we escape in case of natural wildfire. It's even difficult to imagine. The only hope for mankind would be a window when the ice cover of the Antarctic has not yet suffered from drought. During this period, it would be possible to migrate to the southern hemisphere. True, all the travelers would find there would be a wasteland, albeit with water, but without infrastructure and resources for survival. Of course, you could build a bunker and hide in it from the weather and the hot sun. But the oxygen in the atmosphere would become less and less, and it would become harder to breathe. No form of shelter would ever solve this problem. It sounds pessimistic, but enthusiasts have a great rescue plan. According to them, we can colonize an aquatic planet. The main thing to save it from excess water. That's kind of ironic, isn't it? Options for how to drain another planet's mass. Someone suggests installing a massive orbital mirror and to boil off water with the help of the sun's rays. Someone wants to increase the cloud cover over the planet using chemicals, cool it, and thus freeze the liquid. And someone else suggests using a giant heater so that the water just boils away. How would you drain excess fluid from an entire planet? Write in the comments even your craziest options. After all, the greatest discoveries in history have always begun from ideas that were strange at first glance. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. And don't forget to click on the bell to enable notifications on the release of new videos. And stay with us, there are still a lot of interesting videos ahead. And oh yes, don't forget to recommend us to your friends. Riddle is much more fun together.
What will be if we wrap you round and round with scotch tape? Throw the whole package into a microwave oven. Roast quite well. Feed that to a giant hungry whale. After that, drown you in the ocean. Then bury you alive, send you into space. Then let you drop back down to Earth straight to the bottom of the Mariana Trench. After that, take you out and dry you under a nice warm lightning storm. Dress you up, comb you out, stick you on a plane, climb to a height of 30,000 feet, and... Toss you out once more, where you plummet back down to the unyielding surface. Of course, without a parachute. What will happen then? Let's ask Arnold. How are you feeling, buddy? You still on your feet? Well then, how about this? There's no time to explain. Just click on the link in the description and watch the first episode in this awesomely great new cartoon series, soon to explode across the entire damn internet. Come on, press the button. You can't resist subscribing to this channel.